top stories in this week's paper. Take a peek at our information spread on the higher education budget cuts to see how everybody from AS, the administration staff, and faculty are dealing with the crisis. Experimental banjo player Bela Fleck performed Wednesday at Laxon Auditorium. And Chico State alumni comes to Chico to talk to students about his engineering work and his contribution to earthquake safety in Haiti and Japan. Hello and welcome to the April 20th edition of the Orion. I'm Angela Nabry. Okay, you're not Angela Nabry, that's just creepy. Damn. <laughs> well, Angela's sick today, but you know what else is creepy? Ghosts. <laughs> All right, well, Ghost Trackers recently came to Chico to try and find out whether or not Bidwell Mansion is haunted. It's not. You don't know that? I don't think it is. Well, it could be. It's not. This year, the Santa Clara-based Ghost Trackers chose Chico to host its ninth annual California Ghost Hunters Conference. The decision is based on certain criteria, such as historical value, and a location with a few old ghost stories wouldn't hurt either. The Victorian-style mansion has three floors, 26 rooms, and has been the site for both John and Annie Bidwell's deaths, as well as some others, said Amber Drake, a guide supervisor who has worked at the mansion for 11 years. And I don't think that there's anything particularly interesting about paranormal activity here at the mansion. Many employees have stories about hearing strange noises, but the general stance of the staff is that the mansion isn't haunted. Now, that doesn't mean that people don't come here and sense things or feel things. Um, Children especially want to come and find out, do you have a haunted house? So tell me about your haunted house. There's nothing scary or haunted about here, and I've not experienced paranormal activity. However, possible evidence found by the Ghost Trackers may prove otherwise. Gloria Young, the founder and director of Ghost Trackers, called and said that Bidwell Mansion, if it was up to her to make a decision, is indeed haunted. I think it's up for the, the individual to come and check it out for themselves and see what they decide. See, Jeb, I told you to know whether or not Bidwell Mansion was haunted. Okay, maybe we don't know for sure. Well, our next video talks about the differences between male and female appearances and hygiene. Like, how long did it take you to do your hair this morning? I rolled out of bed. Exactly my point. Um, I judge a male's appearance by his cleanliness, his style, clean cut. Um, I guess I judge girls, uh, I guess, the same way. Most of the time, long hair is the first thing you look at. Um, definitely tight pants. Makeup. Stereotypical to be honest, uh, females they take longer to get ready. When females wear makeup and stuff, it may like portray they care about themselves more or their appearance more than not. Guys don't care about their looks as much as girls. I use the restroom for the guys here. Sometimes they don't wash their hands, you know? I mean that's gross. I don't know about girls, but I think they do. They wash their hands. They after. do. I think. <laughs> It is more important. I can see more of a difference when females um, do go that extra mile in the morning as opposed to males. Like, I can't tell if they roll out of bed or if they spend like 10 minutes on their hair or something. So I feel like in the culture we live today, it's like you have to impress others in competition by your physical appearance. It's kind of wrong, to be honest. Recent budget cuts have taken their toll on students and faculty. And students got together on Wednesday the 13th to march to the administration building in protest. Now is the time to take a stand. In the last five years, 94%. In the last 10, 250%. More coming your way. Are you going to do anything? Are you going to take a stand? Over the past several years, we've had administration increase by 9% while faculty has decreased 9%. And the faculty are the ones that are actually in the class with the students. And listen, we gotta do a lot more. We're just getting started here. This is a, a united effort from the faculty, from staff, from students. Uh, that higher education is a major area of funding and it deserves uh, to be funded by the state. And it's just incredible the increases that they've gotten to cut back and so we're losing fa full-time faculty. I mean they just announced these crazy cuts and these threats of these crazy cuts. One out of every two dollars in our budget? Guys, do you realize what this means? I mean this means that you lose like at least a third of your courses. Nothing will change without our political activism. Nothing will change without our political awareness. And this is why it's critical for every single student to step out of the classroom for one day and to be here and to fight for higher education because this is the only way it's going to change. CSU! CSU! Education! Up next, we have Thomas Lawrence with sports. Check out Gina Pence's front page story on water skiing this week on the Orion. 
Water ski team finished seventh in nationals in Division Two this year and is looking to rebuild and get back to Division One. On B2, top of the page, check out the story about the Chico State baseball team taking down second place Cal State LA in three games out of four as senior Adrian Bringus contributed 10 hits to the Wildcats offensive attack and Chico State remained in first place in the CCAA. On the bottom of B2, check out Kevin Augustine's softball story as Chico State won three out of four games and climbed into third place in the conference behind pitcher Sam Baker's three wins and two home runs. Baker is now 20-3 on the year and has seven home runs as well as a pitcher, good for second on the team. On B3, take a look at Ali Koloski's story about Wildcats and their off-season workouts. She talks to men's soccer, volleyball, and cross country about all the things they do in the spring to prepare for their fall seasons. And on the final page of Sports B4, check out Blake Mahegan's profile about Wildcats pitcher and star hitter Sam Baker, the junior transfer from Sierra College, who's second in the CCAA and wins with 20. And check out the Orion Sports next week for coverage on bass fishing, the life of Chico State redshirts, and softball's final series of the season at home against Cal State Monterey Bay. For these stories and more, be sure to pick up a copy of the Orion. You can find them all around campus. Also check us out on Facebook and theorion.com. We'll see you next time. Angela and Avery here with the weather report. Today, it's going to be partly cloudy. Tomorrow, sunny. Wednesday, I don't know. This weekend, I hope it's sunny! We'll see you next time!